<laughs> Hello, it's me, Mario. You watching GRTV, my favorite. Wahoo! You were trusted to lead the Republic, but you were deceived. As our powers of the dark side have blinded you. We're in a very dark uh, Star Wars themed room. You kind of have to uh, take, yeah, take my word for it because we're not allowed to film the screens around here. But uh, <laughs> we're here, of course, for Star Wars: The Old Republic, and. It's, well, it's a huge project for you guys. Oh, yes. Uh, what's been like getting this far? Because we're seeing more and more, and, well, people are hoping for a closed beta. We at least know there's uh, some uh, closed testing going on. Well, it's been a long process. We've been in development since 2006, and the team is now many hundreds of people at the Austin studio, and we have teams in Edmonton and in Mythic, and we have many outsourcers. And it's just a huge project. As I'm sure you saw EA announce, it's the biggest game they've ever made. It's the most expensive game they've ever made. Um, yeah, it's, it's a huge a huge game, bigger than anything I've ever worked on. And it requires um, a lot of different kind of processes than you would use on a, a much smaller game. And by smaller games, I mean games like Dragon Age and Mass Effect, which th those games themselves are huge. But uh, this game just dwarfs anything else that um, I've worked on or heard of. So. But you've been, uh, been with Bioware for quite some time. Yes, I've been with Bioware since 1996. Um, so I worked on the Baldur's Gate series, Neverwinter Nights, and Star Wars, Nice Old Republic as lead designer. Yeah, exactly. And now you're moving on to, to doing this MMO. What's that transition been like from, from story-heavy games such as Baldur's Gate to, well, the massive multiplayer online game? Well, it's still, um, because it's a Bioware game, it's still story focused. So um, I've been able to bring all that experience um, from the previous games into this game. The big difference is the focus on multiplayer. Everything's, everything has to support multiplayer. The storytelling has to, the world building has to, the combat has to. Um, you know, in a, a typical Bioware game, actually, I think every single Bioware game, you can pause the game at any time and decide what you're going to do. But in a massive multiplayer game, it's real time all the time. So that means you have to design things differently for combat. How a companion character gets used has to be different. Even a story, you have to accept the fact that a player is not going to be able to save the game and reload at a previous um, save point. He's going to be stuck with the decisions he makes. But what's that been like for a, for a designer to work on? To just go from, from a more easy go, uh, not easy, of course, making Baldur's Gate, that's not what I, <laughs> what I mean, but, but opening up for you, personally. How's that, that jump been? Oh, it's been exciting. It's been um, a learning experience. I've learned a lot since um, starting on the project uh, five years ago. You know, I've worked with um, one of the big things was we had to build the team almost from scratch. So I'm working with all kinds of new uh, people, new designers, new programmers that I've never worked with before. In fact, uh, the design team itself is um, about five times the size of any design team I've worked on before. So it's been just a, a completely different experience for me. As a lead designer, I'm used to you know managing a team of like 12, 13, maybe 14 designers. Now I'm managing. Well, I can't tell, say exact numbers, but let's say it's more than 70, less than 100. Um, so, it's uh, it means that um, you know I've had to uh, learn a lot more um, about being a good manager. It's um, you know I've had to learn more about how to delegate. Um, it also means organizationally, like we've had to be a lot more strict when it comes to the way we do things because. Unlike in a smaller game where you can kind of um, futz around and do a lot of iteration and, and you know make lots of little mistakes and be a little bit chaotic, we can't really be that way on this project because it's just too big. There's too much content. We have to be very organized and very um, disciplined. Uh, one thing, looking back at, at, as you said, most if not all Bioware games have been uh, very story driven. and. In one sense, if me and my friends sit down and we, we compare notes and what we've been doing in, in games like, for example, Baldur's Gate or even recently like Mass Effect 2 or Dragon Age, uh, things can, can have gone completely different, yet we know that at the basis of this is uh, a common narrative. 
How does that work in a multiplayer setting, though? At the end of the day, all of us will have these shared moments. We won't be able to be, uh, be unique snowflakes, as someone nicely put it on massively.com, I, I think it was. Uh, how do you feel about that as a, as a designer? Do you think that's a problem or just something that we'll have to live with? No, I don't think it's a problem. Um, it's because at the end of the day, we're making a game, and a game is about you know providing the player with a, a very fun and epic experience. And if we're going to do that, it has to be crafted. And if you're going to craft an experience, that means you can't craft you know four million experiences, you know, separate experiences. Each we're going to we have to only craft a select few of experiences. In our case, we have eight different classes, and each of those classes has um, the ability to go down different paths because of the light side, dark side system. So you do have a lot more variation and choices than any other MMO that's come before us. But still, at the end of the day, yes, if you have a Sith warrior and your friend has a Sith warrior, um, your stories are going to be, the basic story path is going to be the same. However, if your friend decides to be light side and you decide to be dark side, you'll have a lot to talk about. You can talk about all the differences and what happened when, when you made the different uh, decisions. So that's kind of exciting. The same goes for companions? Um, oh, how so? Oh, how, how, for example, you, you uh, showed the, the Jedi companion now with the, the, the small droid, uh, familiar from, from people who played Knights of the Old Republic. Um, the same goes for them, that how many will a uh, certain character have and how much customization will it come to, to those uh, well, branching storylines, so to speak? Well, you'll be able to actually customize the appearance of your companion characters. And the other thing is, because you're going to have a stable of companion characters, you're going to be able to pick you know, your favorite companion character and, and adventure around with him. So if you come across, say you're playing a Jedi Knight and you see another Jedi Knight, he might, for example, be playing with a completely different companion character than you. You might be playing with a droid unit. He might be playing with one of the unannounced companion characters that the Jedi Knight has. And, um, but even if, say, you have the exact same companion character, you're able to customize, even for example, if you have a human, a humanoid character, you can actually customize them by putting boots on them and pants and like, uh, you know, the different armor sh uh, suits. And actually what it allows you to do is, um, I like to call it the hand-me-down system. It's like you get all your armor and then you get some new better armor and you go to your companion character, it's like, here's, here's a hand-me-down. You get to start wearing my uh, secondary armor that I've, I've outgrown. So that's kind of cool. Of course, you can also buy stuff specifically for your companion character. But what it allows is for everyone to essentially make their companion character look different. And so you'll, you'll have a lot of um, all the companion characters looking different when you're running around the world. Uh, yeah, we actually had a discussion with Daniel Erickson at uh, E3 about that. He, he mentioned we should have flow shards when it came to uh, hand-me-down armor and uh, you know, rolling for off-spec and all that kind of stuff that, that uh, role players do. Oh, we have so many different uh, pieces of equipment in our game, it's ridiculous. Uh, we have a whole, a whole wall that's uh, like a whole hallway wall that's filled with little post-it notes that like show a picture of the different armor types and it's just filled with them. Like each class has a whole selection of different armors and then we have like uh, selections of armors that aren't specific to the different classes and thousands of different uh, like armor configurations are available in the game from the from the very low level kind of um, basic looking stuff that you might have seen if you played the demo here today to some of the ridiculous armor that uh, you know makes Darth Vader look like a chump. How one major component has been the, the full voiceover uh, of the game that's that you guys have been talking a lot about and of course I know you can't talk about like future stuff like content patches and, and, and uh, expansions and so on but is there a workflow and 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 place that because MMO players tend to get bored, and they tend to get bored quickly. Uh, will you be able to meet those expectations that people have now from, from games like, say, World of Warcraft, for example, when it comes to content patches and, and updates? Well, we have put a lot of thought into that. We know that once players get to the highest level, we have to have something for them to do or they're going to leave. And so we have multiple um, avenues for a player to continue playing the game when he gets to the highest level. One is to go back and re-roll a new character and experience a completely new story from the beginning to the end. The other are high-level activities. We haven't gone into a lot of detail about high-level activities, but we do have a bunch. We have, um, you know, we have the uh, a war zones, which allows you to do PvP combat against other players. Um, we have the flashpoints, which are the repeatable um, uh, star, like, uh, it's what we showed at the last E3, the, the uh, repeatable one to two hour long uh, story experiences that are very intense and kind of like the high points of um, uh, this, your Star Wars story. 
and uh, there'll be some of those that are specifically for the highest level players. And there's other stuff we've also got um, uh, specifically for those those players who've reached the end. But uh, I think you were also talking about what are we, what we're doing after we ship in terms of new content. And yes, we've been do, we've obviously discussed that. We have plans for that, but we're not going to reveal those plans for quite a while. Um, I can say that whenever we're thinking about things, we have to remember that our whole story pipeline makes it so that we have to start any kind of new content very early on because you have to have a script writer write the dialogue and then that dialogue has to be edited so that it becomes a proper script and then that script has to be sent for vo voice well first they have to do a casting call get the right voice actors they record it then it comes back then we have to put it into the game then we have to create the cinematics for it and then we have to localize it into french and german so it's um it's a long process it's not like in the in the old days, you just like type some text in. The designer typed some text in. He was done. And it's like that was five minutes. Now it's a, a month, you know, many month long process. So, yeah, that was that I was getting at. That a lot of people have been been, been a bit scared about this. That that Bioware is going to take a long time to get uh, new content because, as I said, MMO players tend to get bored. Are you able to say something to those people that that are afraid that, that things might take a long time? Well, I can say it is going to take a long time, but we've we've been very strategic about how we've planned um, future content. So I, it's not something it's something that we're worried about as well, and we want to make sure that we keep our players engaged, so they don't have to worry. We've got it under control. We just can't talk about exactly what it is right now. That's fair enough. You, you'll just have to live with that answer for now. But thank you very much for your time. All right. Thanks for talking to me.